Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Dune Spice Wars where we are, we are trying to control all of the spice ever and I think we're doing a relatively okay job, like we're, we're on track, we're on par to, uh, to make some good progress Let's here. Get to business. We have a ton of Plaskrete in the bank, so it might be worth my while to go around and like build research wherever it makes sense, also I need to be filling out my militia reserves. So in these like more for, well, these aren't really forward bases yet, but I think it, I'm trying to think the main thing that I will have to worry about in the mid to late game will be rebellions. So I don't know if I really need to worry about stuff like that just yet. I could continue to make more Plascrete, which would allow me to go even taller with my technology. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. My question is, do I want to start building craft workshops? I mean, I'm going for the hegemony win here. So if I think about this, this will convert on a daily basis, right? Yeah, this is worth it. If I'm going for hegemony win and I start this early, like if I think about that seven salary being converted into victory points, like what else would it be? Manpower? Okay. It's got to be, yeah, it's got to be, I got to start getting craft workshops, I think. That's like the next step to my build. Now, I won't be getting them everywhere, but I definitely feel like this is the build that I'm going for. I'm going for a very, very economic build. Now, I'm very, very vulnerable to aggression, but I can also quite quickly tech switch like it would only take me you know 15 14 days to get to ground command um but now now that i have the tech what's it called uh spectral imaging i think it's important for me to come back and grab all my ornithopters and make sure that instead of exploring uh every single one of my uh harvesting teams has a ornithopter supervising them and it's really really important that they're supervised because i need them to to produce just as much spice as humanly possible. We found another siege, we immediately start trading with it. We want to make friends with all of these sieges. We have an unassigned agent. We don't need to put anyone else in Chome. I don't know if I need counter intel. It could be good just to start getting intel and start doing um, crowd manipulations here. Although that's, that costs a lot of money when I'm going to be wanting running Chome shares. I'll have a think about it. I'll just put them onto uh, managing Arrakis for now. We have a Landsrad council vote. I've already assigned my votes. I want to, I want to make sure I keep a little bit of influence in the bank. That's kind of important to me. I do wish that these sieges would like change color based on who was allied with them. Like if I'm allied with the siege, it would be kind of neat if it would said, oh, you know, you're allied. There it is. Boom, boom, boom. Should I start building missile batteries to increase my defensiveness? It's probably not a bad idea, honestly. Add a few middle missile batteries around. Let's get my units and thump them over to this next spice field that I want to get control of. All right, thumper there. And we can safely thump our way over here. That's honestly not that far of a walk. I probably could have walked that. In fact, I wish I could cancel the thumper. <laughs> so you have a turmoil event here. I've built two new buildings, so we created jobs that will avoid the rebellion. My base is cheaper to build upon. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Ooh, don't walk across the desert, you fools. Hell no. Uh, one thing I would maybe suggest to the developers would be kind of cool is I feel like a lot of towns roll with like a trait. But it would be kind of cool if they rolled with like two traits, like maybe one local trait. Because like, well, I guess they kind of do. They roll with resources and stuff like that. I, I don't know, a little bit more differentiation between towns I think would be kind of cool. I think they're all a little bit samey. Um, right now it would be more interesting if there was like a little, just, just, just like a smidge more differentiation between them. It doesn't have to be like a game changing amount. But I'd like the RNG to just have a little bit more intrigue here. Oh, it looks like a, uh, a high reg dropped here. I could... Increase siege detection. That seems good. I'll drop a supply drop here to heal my units back up. Things are going well. Perfect. I wonder, have any of my units actually leveled up here? I do have a couple of leveled units. You're level two. That's good. Uh, let's capture this spice field. Oh, man. My spice is crazy. My manpower is maxed out. We've got so much spice stockpiled that when the price increases, I am going to... Like, this salary income right here, it's going to go nuts, man. You just wait. You just wait until you see it. It's going to go nuts. Right, let's pop down a spice collector and start building up this town. Now, you can only have five ornithopters, so getting to five spice fields, like, feels fitting to that too. We did find a new siege and we immediately start trading with it because we're, again, we want to be maxed out relations with every siege on the map. Or is, is it CH? I wish I knew. I wish I knew. Okay, Solari price, really good right now. Maximum selling. Look at that, 600 a day. And we're very easily going to be able to hit our next quota. All right, where could I go next with my military? Maybe I should just focus on consolidation. Is there maybe like a piece of territory 
the red chasm. I'm wondering if there's a territory that has like, ooh, yeah, moon dew veil. That would be a good one to pick up. I'd also like arsenic as a defensive location. And it'll also make me a little bit of cash. So I'm going to quickly grab arsenic. I'll send my troops over there and make sure that we take it out. All right, so this is the point in the game where I want to start inciting rebellions. I will incite a rebellion for influence production. Well, I kind of want influence production to stay high. Although this will hurt other people more than it will hurt me. It might be good to cause a rebellion for that. All right, Ornithopter, guard this harvesting team. Put our one, two, three extra harvesters on it. We're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves spice silos in here to increase the spice production. And I need to think about where... I, it, it'll, it'll just go here. I was thinking about where I need to put the um, Shai Halud temple thingy. That'll make people uh, work harder. I'm also going to build myself a... Well, I can't do military bases yet, but I would like to build a military base. It's kind of on my... Um, uh, it's, it's on my radar, basically, is what I'm trying to say. We have control of arsenic. Obviously, the very first thing we want to do is pop down that processing plant, get the production going in here. Oh, lovely. I could start doing chome shares. Do I, do I start, like, cranking those now, or do I wait? We have a little bit of a think about that. Is there a reason to wait? I really don't think so. I guess... I mean, I make so much money that I, I don't think there is a reason to wait here. So, uh, chome shares, we just start buying them. Because we have the cash flow. We have the money to make it happen. We hit our hegemony threshold. So now our military units will get power based uh, on our hegemony level. So if I click on a guy now... I can't tell what their level is. I would kind of like the unit stats to be a bit more transparent. Like if I hover over power, I'd like to see like base power plus XYZ percent. And then, you know, what those percentages are coming from. There's a few UI things I would like to see, you know, rectified and improved. But otherwise, I think the game overall, like honestly, if you had told me that this was like a full release launch game, I'd have believed you. I'd have believed you uh, at my current, you know, play level. Uh, let's go ahead and take control of Arkney. And once that's done, we can start building up a little bit more tech, a little bit more hegemony production. We have the cash saved up to do another Chom share. Boom. Man, I'm, that's insane, the rate that I'm able to do that at. Like, legitimately insane. We found yet another siege here. This one actually gives us a little bit of knowledge. It's kind of cool. Remember, I want to get as many alliances with these guys as humanly possible. Oh, wow. I can go up to six building slots in Talda. That's an interesting idea. Why would I do this? I guess, why wouldn't I? Drop myself a crafts workshop, start pumping that hegemony. I'm feeling really good with my 229 spice per turn production. I'm trying to remember, is there a building I'm missing? Yeah, the Al Ghaib temple. That's like a huge amount of spice. In fact, I think I'm researching. Yeah, I am. Siege network. Once that's done, our spice production is legitimately insane. Ooh, uh, this siege is now friendly. We can now spend influence or uh, authority rather to get control of them, which will lower the upkeep in this region, which you know, probably isn't super important considering, you know, this wasn't a very high upkeep region to begin with. But I definitely want a missile battery and a military base here, which means we could probably only really afford to pop a research hub in here. Let me tell you, I, I really like, I enjoy focusing on research. I think I tried ignoring research in one of my games, and I don't think it worked as well. Also, I could form an alliance with this siege. Now remember, this is also going to increase my spice income, right? We're up to 246 now. And this one gives me a 20% Solari production boost. Oh, man. And another Siege that I'm friendly with. What is happening? What does this one do? Plus four knowledge. Oh, my God. Bro. Everything, like, this build has come together, like, so perfectly to a degree that it's even, it's hard to even really describe how perfectly this build has come together for me. All right, we got a Rebellion over here. So I'm probably going to start getting targeted with Rebellion stuff, which is okay, because we're just about ready to make our way down to defense systems to increase our militia and also increase our number of units that we can have. And then also once I have call to arms, I'll be able to increase the quality of my militia and get access to the Fedekin uh, unit, which will be really, really powerful for me. That'll make my it'll make my military way more efficient. I'm pretty sure a single Fedekin could take on this entire army here with a single supply drop. I am a little bit low on water, so that's something I should be considering pretty heavily here. Anywhere that there's, like, good wind. Like, four. I think four is my, my lowest I want to go for wind. I don't want to go any lower than four. But, like, four wind is a good amount. So we have Siege Network now. I could go for Sand Diplomacy. Would increase... I am going for a siege heavy play. It would take 20 days to research. I think I would rather go for ground command now. I need to increase the size of my military. 
Uh, my military is- ooh! Uh, my military was eaten. <laughs> Whoops. It happens. We have the economy now to take losses like that on the chin. A new spice report has been made, so the, the price of spice is not changing, and we have enough in the bank to continue to sell aggressively. That's amazing news. Amazing, amazing, amazing news. A famous group of sculptors are looking for something. If I give them a thousand salary, they'll give me 200 hegemony. Thank you. Uh, that's like, like the easiest trade of my life. We have some unassigned agents. Let's infiltrate here. I think actually the big thing I need to do before I do anything else is to get countermeasures for plus five max agents. I think it would be good. In terms of voting, I'd like to have cheaper buildings if we could make it happen. I won't hold my breath, but it would be nice. It would be nice. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about um, military intervention from like House Harkonnen. That kind of spooks me right now. If he just decided to attack me, I would have a very, very bad time. But thankfully, this was a large map, so I was able to play a little bit like greedily. I think large maps might actually be easier because of that, because you can play so greedily. Another town under my control and we can start building it up. Always, you know, Plazcrete, always useful. Always have, a, always have a surplus of Plazcrete, let me tell you. We found a siege inside enemy territory, actually, and we can start trading with them as well, boosting uh, our Solari income. And they'll make ch warriors cheaper to recruit, which is kind of interesting. It's not like the main goal, but those things are kind of interesting. Like the little benefits you get. Bro, I am just cranking chome shares. I'm up to 1,500. 1,500 chome shares. Uh, and we can get the Al Ghaib Temple. Look at that. 20% spice production. 40% more resources when trading with the CH. Uh, with CH. And a 40% production in all neighboring villages. Oh my goodness. My economy is so stupidly efficient. I'm going to form another alliance. That's another 10% spice production. Oh. Man, the Fremen, the Fremen, the way the Fremen play is actually incredibly satisfying. I think, I think of all four factions, now that I've played them all, uh, I think my favorite are the House Atreides and the Fremen. Both of those feel very, very fun and rewarding to play. I've really enjoyed both. And of, of all the styles, this economic style has felt really good to me. The militaristic style, I think that's something I need to experiment with and figure out. I think it could work. I just, I haven't figured out how to make it work. But I, I like this tech heavy pacifist style where I just, I like, I conquer Dune through, you know, clever manipulation of different buildings and putting the right stuff in the right places. So we picked up countermeasures that will give us an extra five agents and it'll increase our agent recruitment speed. I'm trying to think about what would be really important here. I would eventually like the recycling vats building. Desert mastery is not so important to me. Yeah, I think I think it is go straight down to ground command and defense systems, call to arms, these sorts of things. Make a, make my way down there to improve my defensiveness. Protect against the pushing of Baron Harkonnen. Speaking of Vladimir Harkonnen, how everyone else is I don't think anyone has died yet. How's Atreides seems to be getting uh, attacked a lot. Yeah, I haven't seen his presence on the map. Um I'm well ahead in terms of hegemony because I'm continuously buying these chome shares which are like making good progress on me. I think it would be good to try to trigger a few rebellions for Baron Harkonnen. It really, the, the, the thing I lack though is I don't know where his army is. That's like the big problem. But you know, if I were to cause a little rebellion over here in Fonsan, for example, it could be annoying enough for him to have to deal with this. I mean, if I think about it this way, if a single one of these rebellion things takes out one Baron Harkonnen unit and puts this village out of commission for a minute or a day or two, I think it's actually paying off in terms of the economic damage I'm doing to another player. Nice one. We got the Al Ghaib Temple, which means we're getting 40% more hedge money from our Chome shares. Um, that's huge. That's huge. So everything is starting to line up in a way that is incredibly satisfying for me. This has easily been the most satisfying game I've played, to, to be straight up with you. This has been the most fun I've had, like, putting together this build and getting things to work exactly how I want them to. Uh, this has been like an incredibly satisfying and fun experience for me. Like in my Atreides game, I felt like I was getting pillaged and attacked so often that I never had time. Oh, I lost an Ornithopter in a Sandstorm. That's a big rip. Um, yeah, I felt like I was having so many rebellions that I couldn't actually hold any land and it was very, very difficult to uh, continue playing. But this, this has felt like really evenly paced. And I think part of it is, okay, Speaker of the Council. Uh, House of Trades managed to grab Speaker of the Council. Okay, so the governorship of Dune could potentially be coming soon. Should I 
continue to expand here. I need five more regions. Ah, they took that. Oh no, Baron Harkonnen is taking this town. I was literally just about to come in here and take this town. How does he feel about me? He doesn't hate me yet. Another siege is friendly. Excellent. Give me that. The spice must flow. Now, what are you going to do to this town? That's kind of like the question I have to ask here. We paid this basin guild bribe and the price is still good so we can continue to sell. He's only pillaging it. That's okay. Quick little pillage is something we can all get behind. Um, I would like to control Audras, actually. So let me get all these guys in the same spot. I think the, the biggest weakness of the Fremen is their mobility. They are extremely low mobility. I feel like they should have by default plus one militia slot. Because man, do they feel immobile. All right, let's sandworm our way over here. I guess the big advantage of the Fremen is their units are slightly faster. And they don't take as much attrition in like windy provinces. Even so, I don't think that's like enough of a compensation, man. Oh, do not abandon village. Cancel. I was trying to destroy the missile battery. No, he got here before me. This is BS, dude. Let's attack Baron Harkonnen. I can't let him pillage this town again. He's like way over pillaging. Now, this will annoy him. But that's okay, because this is my village to pillage. So I did pick a little bit of a fight before I was truly ready. But I can start recruiting mercenaries to increase the size of my military without having to research tech. Four mercenaries are roughly equal in power to four warriors. However, they don't require quite so much army score and stuff. Or uh, command points, rather. Capture another village. The border with the Harkonnens. You know what I could do? I could sneak in here. And I could liberate. Let me have a look here. He does have an airfield. That's a problem. He could airdrop me. I would need I would need to have like a serious force to do that. I would need to have my missions prepped. I would need to cause a rebellion in his territory. I mean, we could do all that. Let's get let's get prepped for it. So I want a gear sabotage. I want a supply drop. I want a crowd manipulation. And a a ceasefire in the bank to prevent any counterattack shenanigans. I think that is the perfect setup. There's a new Landsrad Council coming. I would like to apply rebellion to tax negotiations. And then maybe when the Landsrad goes through, that's when I attack the Harkonnens. I love that my allied sieges still send raids on other people. That's like the best thing ever. <laughs> oh, get wrecked. Get destroyed. It could be good to pick up a barracks here. It would give me plus two health on all my military units. Or plus 20% health. Yeah, I'm going to grab that. 20% health is quite a decent amount. Um, that'll give me that little bit of late game power I need to stay competitive with the AI. I think I might be ready to go up to a, a higher difficulty level. Although I, I, I think I need a little bit more experience with the um, certain things. But roughly every 10 days, or even less to be honest, I can buy a chome share. Um, and my current chome shares are like out of this world, about 3,400. I'm cranking craft workshops too. We can form an alliance here. Incredible. More alliances. My control, my spice flowing is like insane. Dude, this build feels, I feel so powerful. Ah, I'm not allowed to vote in a resolution that I've triggered a rebellion on. Very interesting. So once this Landsrad passes, they declined this. Interesting that they declined that. However, that does not change my plans. I'm going to trigger a crowd manipulation on House Harkonnen in Ajda, which is his water. That should maybe potentially trigger other rebellions if his water dips low enough. And then we're going to hit Simria. And I'm okay with these units dying because I'm getting ready to replace them with different units. Fadakins mainly. There is an airdrop, but it looks like he's more concerned with raiding than he is actually fighting me. Pillaging might work here. Let's kill the airfield and begin the pillage. Airfield will prevent reinforcements from arriving. If they haven't already been sent, they won't be able to come now. Here's one reinforcing unit. They're not attacking me though. Okay. I will accept you're not attacking me. <laughs> you fool. Okay, this is awesome. We have access to heavy militia now. Now they have an extra 100 health and 3 armor over regu regular militia. It might not seem like much, but that's a significant amount of extra survivability. They are significantly more expensive, like on order of th like four times more money and three times more manpower. But that's just the price that you pay. It's just the price that you pay. All right, this is a beautiful pillage. We just picked up a bunch of resources. I'm going to go ahead and disband these warriors so that I can start recruiting Fedekin. Look at these bad boys, okay? 800 health, 19 attack and four armor and they get plus 10% power and armor and plus one armor rather for every unit that's attacking them. That is 
insane. We will be replacing our entire military with those units. <laughs> they are that strong. They feel really, really strong. We are super close to victory too. We're at 21k hegemony. And nobody seems ready to stop me. And I have so much spice in the bank that I can just aggressively, and I mean super aggressively. Like, I'm making 400 spice, dude. 400 spice. It looks like he's prepping for an attack on the border. Thankfully, I have a ceasefire in the bank because I'm not prepared for this attack at all. Let's play the ceasefire. So he can't attack me. Can't do anything to my village. It'll get to build its militia, no problem. And then I'll also be able to get my military in position to thump them in. Now, the only thing about Fedekin is they do cost six. They cost six command points each. But goddamn, are they strong. Especially if you have a turret in support. It could be a game changer. Okay, I need all these guys to be in the same spot so I can actually sandworm them over where we need to go. All right, sandworm is coming, but I'm thumping myself now. In we go. Uh, mission completed. Mission complication. This is for crowd manipulation. I mean, I don't care about Landsrad standing, so I'm okay to lose some. It, <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. I have a village under siege, combat ongoing, sandworm, combat ongoing. Yeah, this turret's helping. That's great. See, these heavy militia, they hold so much longer. Like, look at the damage. Look how heavily damaged these house guards are. And these are strong units. These are not weaklings. Another siege has become friendly. Look at that. Another 20 spice per turn. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. This build I've gone for is insane. It feels unstoppable. I'm pretty sure, like, a, a lone Fedekin could take this six, uh, this six thing down here to the south. The, ooh, Judge of the Council? I didn't get to do... Oh, man, I got way too much Plascrete. I, I need to spend all my Plascrete. Let's go around. <laughs> I need to go around my empire and actually spend it. I keep getting distracted by, like... I, and it's, it's gonna sound, like, arrogant. But, like, how well I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing so well, I keep forgetting to spend my resources. I feel like you could achieve this quite a bit more efficiently than I have. Let's get a military base here and replace heavy militia you're fully built you're fully built you're well you're not quite fully built what could what are you missing what do you think you could use eh, you could use a wind trap get that little bit of extra water this town over here isn't fully built what could we do in here spice silo does not seem useful i don't think there's anything nearby eh, craft workshop a little bit of extra points what are you doing eh, ceremonial caves a five percent spice production really does not feel like worth giving up we could do it more listening posts Sure, let's increase our influence production. Speaking of, let's make sure that nobody gets Judge of the Council this time. Um, I'm okay with a manpower upkeep increase because my manpower is very easy to maintain. And otherwise, I don't care. But for the sake of a place like this, I may as well build extra buildings, right? I got a craft workshop. That's nice. So I'm, I am may be like two or three, if even. I may be... This is my second last chomp share, maybe. Um, I think. If I pop this, now I'm up to 23. Well, second last, maybe third last. Maybe I need to do two more. But I already have, like, I just finished a chome share, and I have the cash to do it again. Like, dude. It's incomprehensible how strong uh, I'm maintaining right now. What if we just, like, pillaged this town again? <laughs> Hear me out. What if we just pillaged it again with our incredibly strong military? There's the chome shares. I think once I have the cash, oh, I should probably do like gear sabotage, supply drop. And oh, I have a crowd manipulation in the bank. Well, let's hit him with that one. A lot of his units are over here on the left side. Oh, wait, we actually made the polar sink go independent. Two Otar is next. Let's make this bad boy go independent. Hell yeah, liberate that town. This is like the best case scenario for me. It's just completely causing uh, House Harkonnen to crumble as I like pump Chome shares and capture things and kill their units. It's a pretty good pillage here. I'll take it. Dude, these Fedekin are insane. I've been waiting the whole game to get them. I'm going to send them against Well, no, I'm pretty sure if I either do another Chome share, and I think here it is. Here is the victory condition. If I pop a Chome share and I manage to kill Walno, uh, or either, either of those things are done and I win. It's kind of neat. Like, look at these guys. Chunk this, right? Because this guy's being attacked by five units, he's doing 32 damage. He has nine armor. And... Uh, just like absurd damage. I need to get into melee with these guys, actually. You need to back up so that the focus fire is lost off you. Yeah, look at that. These two guys took out an entire village on their own without a supply drop. I'm only now playing the supply drop and look at their health shoot back up. Dude. 
That's crazy. Anyway, I click this show them shares button and I win the game. Boom. Uh, there it is. Hello. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was the Fremen in Dune Spice Wars. I really, really enjoyed that build. So I, I kind of, I played for 15 minutes with them and I looked at their tech tree and I was like, okay, okay. I want to try going like straight for economic lobbying and just make tons of money from my chome, uh, my chome trading. And it worked out. I ended up in a position to be able to really take control of this game. This was a really satisfying experience, like getting the super hardcore technology going. Like I almost completed multiple trees. I had tons of really like I, I really liked the no military style. I'm kind of interested in maybe there's a style that fits each of these tech trees really, really well. And I just haven't figured them out yet. I do feel like this style here feels very um, you have to pillage. You have to pillage, 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 pillage. And you have to deal with rebellions all the time. That might suit a Baron Harkonnen style of play. I just have to kind of figure out how to make that work. But so far from playing, it kind of feels like this economic tree, anyone can make it work. The diplomatic tree, anyone can make it work. This tree, anyone can make it work. And I haven't been able to figure out how to make the, the military tree work, really. Except for as the Atreides, but that's because I just went for like the defensive things. The things that just keep me safe. So yeah, that's going to be it for me for this first look at Dune Spice Wars. I have now played a game with every single faction. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!